these here. I certainly do, Jerry. Thank you very much here with the coach, and uh, congratulations. Your team moves to 7-0 and overall, overall 4-0 in conference, and 62-38 uh, victory. Long game out there today, but got the win. That's exactly what you're looking for. Is Jerry still awake? <laughs> that might be the biggest thing. No, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, um, kind of in every phase, but I thought we really responded well in the second half, and, and you know, by the time we got our starters out of there, it, it was right where we needed to be in terms of a response, how we were playing, uh, and just our guys kind of, you know, offensively in the first half just needed to take care of the football a little bit better. Uh, had those three turnovers, uh, had a ton of yards. It seemed like I don't know exactly what those those numbers were at halftime, but didn't finish with the ball. And that's, that's you know, job one in, in, in offensive football. But uh, happy with our response in the second half. And, uh, yeah, moving on. Yeah, particularly uh, well, offense and defense. I mean, both of them, the offense put points on the board in the third quarter when they needed to defense really shut Washington State down for the first 25 minutes of that second half. So both sides of the ball really came to play in the second half. Exactly, exactly. And that, that you know, the, the game changed a little bit there after that, that, those 25 minutes. And, and, again, proud of our guys, just, just believing in what we're doing. They played a ton of guys uh, in a bunch of roles defensively and in special teams. And so we thought we could kind of wear them down with just our conditioning and our, our you know, our kind of our, our deal. Uh, and, and that really, I think, showed up there in that th third quarter. And the balance on offense was a key, it looked like, to uh, 327 through the air, 381 on the ground. Uh, big game by Byron Marshall, 192 yards, and Thomas Tyner, another 99. So between those two guys, almost 300 yards. Uh, but it all started up front. The offensive line really created some good holes. Yeah, we were a little, you know, mis mismatched a couple times in, in, in both protection and the run game up front, but I, I thought, again, those guys just kept playing. And they made a couple plays, got to Marcus a couple times, but, but uh, it was, a, again, a team effort. You know, Marcus pulling the ball a couple times in, in the run game, and, and yeah, Byron, Byron ran hard. I thought Thomas did some really good things, and he's a guy, again, that will watch the film and, and get better, as we all will. Cameron Hunt, freshman out there, number 77, playing a lot of football and looked like he played really well for a freshman making his first start. He did. He did. Uh, Cameron's a guy with a ton of upside. I think he's, he's got a really bright future for us. And like any old lineman, you know, you just need to play. I mean, he's, he's seeing guys he's never seen before, fronts he's never seen before, blitzes he's never you know, seen before at, at full speed at this level. And so there's going to be a little bit of, uh, you know, whether it's adjustment or whatever, but he's one of those guys that just tries to run through the wall and then thinks about it later and says, okay, that was a wall, maybe I'll take it on a little bit differently next time. But, but he, he just he goes, and that's, that's, that's great. I thought overall your defense did a really good job of keeping plays in front of you. I mean, Washington State hit a couple of big plays. Connor Halliday put the ball and the money on a couple of very nice throws. But bottom line is making a team like that go 13, 14, 15 plays down yeah. the field, eventually something happens, and it did four picks. Yeah, did you complete 58 balls in your career? <laughs> That's an honest question. No, I didn't, I don't think. I, <laughs> but I appreciate you asking. So, uh, Yeah, that, that's, I just noticed that. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I think, you know, a ton of slants and arrows and a bunch of, bunch of short-range stuff. And, yeah, you want to make, make them earn it. And, again, I think up, up front we, we, we got to a little bit just with our, our, our defensive line rotation and, and – you know, I think every pick was was forced by the D line almost. You know, we did some good things in the back end too, uh, and, and complementing one another as the game went on. How do you? I mean, <clears throat> does a defense get frustrated with having to? I mean, maybe it's not a frustration, but I mean, that many throws chasing guys all over the place because of the crossing patterns and that type of deal. Does a defense have to stay patient? I guess. Uh, maybe to a certain degree. I mean, patience is not necessarily a, a word you use too much with defense, other than doing your job and 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 you know reading your keys and playing with your eyes and all and proper leverage and all that stuff in, in terms of double moves or something like that. But but I thought for the most part we rallied to the ball and like you said, I mean, they threw ball eighty nine times, something something's gonna you know, something good is gonna happen at some point. Yeah. Well on to next week, uh, get a chance to enjoy this win tonight, but UCLA comes to town and it never gets easy in this league. It never is easy in this league. Uh, and UCLA comes to town, loses to Stanford today, but still in the thick of things, you, you know you're going to get their best effort coming out of the stadium. 
Definitely. They're a really talented team. You know, a lot of those guys that, that at UCLA we were involved in rec the recruiting of, you know, like a ton of the teams in this conference that we, we know pretty well. And they're a very talented team, obviously very well coached, have a great quarterback, great defense, and, and uh, another, another huge challenge. All right, Coach Will. Enjoy this one. Congratulations. You moved to 7-0 and 4-0 and in the league. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Jordy. All right, Jerry, back up to you. Questions for Coach? Congrats on the Red Sox, by the way. <laughs> Knowing the uh, perfectionist that Nick is, he's going to have some critical remark about defense this time. So you just mentioned 92 plays. How do you see the defensive performance evaluated when someone does throw the ball down? Well, I think when he, you know when we started making our substitutions, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that happened there late, which you know is going to happen. I think when our, you know our, our scout team was in there for those last drives. You know they're they're gonna they're gonna make some yards and and I think it's just what we're talking about before. If you can limit limit the big plays, which they had a couple, um, and and just make them earn it, hit them, confuse them. Uh, at some point, it, it's gonna it's gonna come up and, and bite them, and it did there four times. Anybody right here? No front. It's late, you guys. That's fine. If you <laughs> Jason's got a long drive. Hey, uh, how do you feel about uh, Marcus? Playing after everybody in the dog uh, talked about him uh, this entire week, and uh, how do you how do you feel about him uh, taking on the added attention of the high as in, in the first part of the question, as in how he played, or yeah, how do you, how do you think he, he handled uh, the extra attention he's gotten over the last week, and how do you anticipate him taking it from here? I think Marcus is a stud, um, and and he played great. You know, had a had a couple couple times where. Uh, I'll take the blame for that of, of communication errors in, in the passing game. We had a couple of broken routes that, that he was waiting on. You know, it was kind of somebody's fault one time and his fault one time. But the, you know, confusion is my fault. Confusion is our fault as coaches. Uh, and we'll we'll get that cleaned up. But Marcus is is amazing. I mean, he's a he's a driven guy. Prepared really well this week. I think played played really well. And and we'll get better uh, because of a couple you know hiccups here and there. Here in the middle, a couple. Of Couple quick change plays. Defense faced some adversity. Are, are you happy with how your defense and how your offense also responded once they scored the the quick two touchdowns? Yeah, I mean, obviously you know, the beginning part of that we prefer not to turn it over. You know, to, to basically, the, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but the three turnovers we had were basically, you know, unforced errors kind of category, and and so we need to to, to clean that up. Uh, but yeah, anytime you get kind of that sudden change mentality, it's it it it's a great you know tester. Of uh, character, of, of just the makeup of our guys, and as I've said before, I love this team. And uh, those guys are grinders, and they believe in what, what they're doing and what we're doing. And, and you know, 62-38 at the end, we'll take. More way in the back. Mark, kind of along that same line back here. Um, Marcus took those those big hits, and he fumbled. Were, were they showing different protections? Uh, what happened to the offensive line? Or they just they just broke free and got to Marcus. Um, I, and this is just the, the naked eye on the sideline. I thought one time we, we held it too long, and one time we, we uh, were waiting on a route that, that is my fault for miscommunicating the route. Um, and so, you know, it's a little bit, of, a little bit of everything. We need to protect better. Absolutely, we need to make just a little bit quicker decisions a couple times. And and, uh, but nothing, you know. Oh my gosh, this particular position didn't, you know, what I mean, didn't, didn't, didn't uh, play well or. Do anything of that nature, but you know they didn't do anything uh, differently at all. I think they played us a little bit more base than than maybe we expected. I think we expected a little bit more blitz, but uh, from that standpoint, not too much different. Right here in the middle again. Red Sox guy gets two questions tonight. It's a special it's night. A big night. You should feel safer. Tom should be in a really good mood too. Um, <laughs> running back wise, did you feel like? <laughs> Did you feel like Thomas and Byron created a lot of the yard more so than maybe normal? I mean, the, the line did a good job, but it seemed like they did a lot of good cutting. They ran hard. Um, you know, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the percentage of, of uh, production, you know, goes to what. I think part of, part of that's, that's what makes our, our team fun and neat and unique is nobody cares. You know, nobody cares that, hey, the right guard, he pushed his guy, you know, six inches, and so he gets that yard. And then the back, you know, made the linebacker mix, so he gets those four yards. And then Marcus pulled that guy out, so he gets two. You know what I mean? It's it's we ended up with uh, 383 yards, and those 
are for the Oregon Ducks, and and you know that 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 uh, is a neat thing to be around. Yeah, yeah, Mark. Um, Marcus has had so much success, and you know, finally drops the ball on the carpet a couple times. I assume that he's going to be probably more upset about that than maybe some of the plays he made. But is that almost a what you guys call teachable moments that that uh, he can almost learn more from those couple plays and maybe some of the success he's had? Well, yeah, you you can learn from everything. You know, it's it's always like we say, it's always better to learn in a winning environment and, and make a few mistakes than, than it is to lose. But uh, yeah, turn the ball over again, that's a, a multi, multi-person multi responsibility, starting with us as coaches and, and a couple of those other things, just yeah, making making either a throw it away decision or an eat it decision, take a sack, you know, maybe that's the best thing to do in that situation. Uh, but <laughs> Marcus, he might throw the ball to the other team at some point, buy a lottery ticket, that'll be a big night, but it could happen. He, he might turn it over, he might... You know, I don't know. Whatever else is bad in his world, he might do it. Back here. <clears throat> Talk a little bit about the uh, significance of the, the uniforms, the helmets tonight, and what that uh, meant for the significance for not only you but the team. Well, I think I think the neatest part is is, is it came from the team. You know, it was the players' idea that that kind of drove the the. Both the the relationship with Nike and then and then the relationship with the KGAL Cancer Fund and so it, it's an all inclusive deal. You know, the, uh, every cent of of the the auctions, every cent of of all the the money raised from this will go directly to research. You know, I had a couple people asking me about, well, it's just breast cancer. No, it's if they find the cure for breast cancer, they're not going to hoard it and they're going to you know they might cure other cancers. Uh, and and so that's what's that's what makes it so neat is is everybody's involved and everybody wins. You know we've all been affected by cancer in some way, shape, or form, directly or indirectly, and and you know it's a fight the media and coaches and players can even agree on. Right? Anyone else? Thank you, coach. All right. Thanks a lot.